Hey gang, welcome to the Worksheet Solutions Walkthrough for the Worksheet Cyclohexane, Up Close and Personal. By now, you know the drill, but for anyone that's new to these videos, you've seen the worksheet that goes along with the Cyclohexane video on JoCab. Maybe you've done it, and maybe you're looking for some extra explanation for some of the answers in the PDF provided solution. Well, you're in the right place. Basically, we're gonna go through the worksheet. We're gonna do it, and by the end, you'll see exactly how I arrived at the answers for the solutions provided, so let's do it. In problem one, all we're doing is, given the chair shown right here, we just need to convert the chair to a bond line form. So, nothing easy, we're just really working with wedges and dashes here. So remember, wedges means, what, like, you know, a wedge to, you know, a substituent means that it is above the ring, and a dash means it's away. But on flat paper, right, that means the wedge is kind of coming at, out of you know, the plane of the board, the page, whatever you're working with, coming at you, and the wedge would be through the board or the plane, coming away, going away from you. Okay, so if we look at the first problem in problem one, the nice part is we always know that we are working on a cyclohexane ring. So we can just go ahead and draw that, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So what might help is just at least numbering where the substituents are. So we have a methyl group at one and a methyl group at four. And we can see that they're on different sides of the ring. And remember, up is always up, down is always down. In this case, we have up axial and down axial. So if I'm gonna use this as position one, my methyl group needs to be a wedge, it needs to be up. That's position one, two, three, and four. And I need to be down here. So you can see that these two groups are on opposite sides of the ring. For bonus points, that's called, they are trans to each other. Different sides of the ring, one is up, one is down. Moving on to two. So remember, we have the nice cyclohexane ring that we know we're working off of. No surprises there. So both of these groups are up, and they kind of have a one-three relationship. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. So this isopropyl group is up. It means I will use a wedge. It's a little bit of a fat wedge, but that's okay. Isopropyl, so don't be thrown off. That is a carbon right there, where the wedge meets the straight line. So, you know, one, two, three carbons. And then on three, we also have a wedge, because they're on the same side of the ring, so you can see, you can see that these groups are cis to one another, same side, okay? Now, here, again, don't be thrown, we are working the cyclohexane ring. So again, we have a trans thing going on, one and two, there, there's a one-two relationship here. So on one, we have a T-butyl group, and just like I mentioned above, this is a carbon, so you do not get thrown off by where the dash is met by the straight line, and on two, this methyl group is wedged. So feel free to, you can add a CH3 here if you want. You can even add an ME if you want for methyl or leave it, that's totally fine. On to problem two. Okay gang, so in problem two, we are given the flat bottom line representation of a cyclohexane ring with substituents and all our job is to do is, all our job is, to draw both chair conformations for each ring. We're not picking which one's more stable, we're just gonna do uh, both chairs. So just some practice having you, you know, obviously even draw, draw chairs because to, truth be told, I was terrible at it first. And then, you know, making sure that we can flip chairs and that's no problem, it's clockwork for us. Okay, so in one. So if we draw a chair, and remember if you're having trouble, whoop, that's too shallow, make sure you do the Draw propane, then go underneath, draw another one, connect the dots. It's definitely the easiest way I've ever found to draw a cyclohexane chair. So there's a one-four relationship here. So if I'm going to draw my, erase this, my ethyl group right here, up at this point, right, this is a peak, so up is axial, down is equatorial. So I can draw my ethyl group like that. And then if I go, this is one, two, three, and now four. This is a valley, so down, this methyl group is axial, okay? So if I go to flip my chair then, remember, draw the upside down propane, but then just draw it the other way, and connect the dots, okay? So remember, it's very easy to forget, this carbon is this carbon. Some people think this is this, and so at this point, remember, up is still up. And now I'm realizing I can give myself a lot of space. So I'm gonna draw that quickly. 
up is still up. So this is up axial, now it's up equatorial, because this is a peak, it goes to being a valley. So, and obviously there's a hydrogen here, hydrogen is down axial. So this is one, two, three, and we have four over here. So down is still down, now it's a peak, so down is, this is down axial, now it's down equatorial. There we go. All right, so let's roll through the next three. I'll draw my chair. Once you do it for a while, I'm draw, gonna draw it the way I typically draw it my chairs. So I have a one-two relationship here. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter where you start with these substituents. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this at the one position. And at this position, that's a peak, so down is axial. And at two, this is up. And up is equatorial. So I'm actually going to go this way. Oh, make that a little bit more apparent as to what that is. There we go. So now if we flip the chair, this position is this position. So remember, down is still down, up is still up. So I'm down here, down is now axial because we went from being a peak to a valley. And at the second position here, we went from being a valley to a peak and up is now axial. Okay, cool. And I can even asterisk this to make that more apparent. All right, next one, let's keep going. And all chairs aren't perfect. So this way, uh, in this problem, we got one, two, three, we have one, three relationship. So at this position, the isopropyl is down, down at this peak is equatorial. And why not, I'll do one, two, and three. Down at this peak is also equatorial, CH3. We'll dot this, we'll asterisk that, flip the chair, let's make sure to draw it the other way. This carbon is still my dot carbon. This carbon is my asterisk carbon. So we went from two peaks to two valleys. Down is still down, up is still up. So down axial as well as down axial CH3. Okay, and one more time. Draw the chair. Not a, that's a, let's redo that. That is that has that chair has no alibi. Okay, that's a little bit better. Barely has an alibi. All right, so we have a one-two relationship here. So I'm going to say this is my t-butyl group. This is going to be my bromine. So up at this peak is axial. Up at this valley is equatorial. And if we flip the chair, we, you know, up is still up, down is still down. Sorry, I had a momentary lapse right there. This is my dot, this is my asterisk. So up is now equatorial, and then up is axial. Okay? All right, gang, problem two. Let's finish it off with three, and then a challenge after that. Okay, gang, in problem three, we have two subsections, two subproblems, where we need to draw both chairs in each situation and identify which chair is the most energetically favorable, which one's more stable, which one has the smaller amount of, you know, um, you know, steric strain, torsional strain, what have you. Okay, so, in, let's focus in on problem one. So if I go ahead, I have to draw my chairs first before we can compare. Remember, we want to put our biggest, bulkiest, most branched groups equatorial versus axial, okay? So if we go ahead, we see we have a one four relationship right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the isopropyl group axial, one, two, three, and four. That means I can then, and I'm gonna move this a little bit. Actually, I didn't need to do that because I'm about to draw this t-butyl group axial as well. Because these are, because we are up at this position, up is axial. We are down this position, down is axial. Now we need to chair flip. So if we chair flip, this position is this position, and this position is this position, okay? So up is still up, down is still down. And now we are up axial 
and over here we are down equatorial. So this is one of those situations where we have pure axial, pure equatorial, and you can pick the side where equatorial is in the chair uh, for these substituents, more stable, it minimizes the various strains that we've talked about. Okay, so problem two. Let's draw the chairs and then compare. So again, we have a 1-4 situation. Same group, okay? Same group. Up and up, right? Up axial, up equatorial. If we do a chair flip, we are up equatorial and we are up axial. So, in this one, this was me kind of just being a little annoying. They're equivalent, okay? So they're both the same in terms of energy, in terms of strain. So it doesn't matter either way. Okay, stick around for the challenge problem. We're going to take a highly substituted cyclohexane chair and make it a Newman projection. Okay, gang, so one problem I typically see, or I, I have typically seen with cyclohexanes and doing, you know, looking at chair conformations and substituted chair comp, you know, substituted chairs is taking a chair and then drawing a Newman projection representation of it. Okay? Just something valid, you know? So what we're going to do is we're going to with this eye's perspective kind of look at the chair like this and see if we can transform this chair not to bond line but to a Newman projection. Okay? So one thing that we didn't explicitly cover in any Jokin video is how to do this. So we're doing it right now. So very similarly with Newman projections, right? We know the dot is a front carbon, the circle is the back. So with cyclohexane, one of the, uh, the you know, reasons why it's so stable and the Newman projection displays this. And again, you can draw this, I'll point out how you, this can be drawn slightly different, is the front and the back are staggered. So by drawing this, I've actually drawn, you can see, you can count the carbons. One, two, or I'll count, I'll count this way. One, oh wait, no, that's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a this is a chair. But we're actually looking at it from the perspective of, you know, this type of eye, where we're actually seeing this carbon up top, right here, and this car, so this carbon is this carbon, and this carbon is this carbon. I hope that kind of makes sense. It is some mental gymnastics. So that's the perspective we're taking on. Now we actually just need to fill in groups where they need to be. So on this top carbon, we can see that the bromine's going up, so we'll go ahead and fill that in as so, you know, as, as such. So, if you can kind of take on this perspective, to my left, if you're looking at it, my left is this carbon right here with the chlorine, and the chlorine's facing down. So I'm gonna draw this chlorine as down, and you can see that we have this and this, so when we draw Newman projections, we have one more group like that, and we know that there's just an equatorial hydrogen, so I will fill that in. So this front, front dot carbon is done, so then We've accomplished this, so we put a little check mark here. Now we can move on to this carbon, which is our circle carbon behind it. So you can see we have groups like this, because we have this way, this way, and this way. So the group facing up is the OH. So we can fill that in. And what we have drawn is the down equatorial H, and it makes sense that this is down. It, you know, that's how we would draw it on the chair. So now we've actually fully represented that carbon. So now we can move on to the circle carbon, which is our back carbon. You can see that we have a methyl group facing down, and we have this up equatorial H. If I wanted to draw it, I could fill it in like that, or you could draw it a little bit more up. So now, moving from here, so check here, moving from here to this carbon, which is the circle carbon in the back. So just really doing a big ring around the rosy. We have this equatorial T-butyl group. Again, you can fill in these right here. Our T-butyl group is down like that, and what we haven't drawn is this axial up H, which is right there. And last but not least, we have this dot carbon right here, which I'll make a little bit more central. And again, we have things shooting off like this, which is this carbon, check right here. We have this carbon right here. So we have an up 
axial CH3, which will go right here, and then a down axial H, which we have yet to draw. And now we have, so check marks all around, smiley face off to the side, we have drawn the Newman projection for this highly substituted cyclohexane chair. I hope you're feeling better about the cyclohexane up close and personal worksheet. If you're watching this video, that means you have thrown me some money and you have supported Joe Kevin. I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. Truly, truly thank you. Thank you for using Joe Kevin as a tool in your journey to conquer carbon. I'm humbled to be along for the ride. I hope to be there the entire way. And most importantly, I hope to see you in the next video.